what's going on guys? It's Jono Jones here from Alpha Grace Ministry. And today I just have a message about God's love towards you because God is love and love never fails. The truth is that God loves you so much. He sent Jesus Christ, his son, to take away your sins, to lay his life down so that he could redeem you from death. So that you could have eternal life as a gift. Did you know that love keeps no record of wrongs? Jesus cannot even remember the wrong things that I have done, the wrong things that you have done. God is full of mercy and grace. God's heart towards you is to embrace you and accept you right now. That is the good news, my friend. And today I've just got a few scriptures from the Bible to help you see and know and understand and trust and rely on the love of God. So the first scripture I have is from Romans chapter 5, verse 8 in the New Living Translation. You can see it on the screen. Now I've highlighted the first bit and it says, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us, while we were still sinners. So think about that. Even when you were sinning, even when you were doing the worst things that you've ever done, when you were at your lowest point in life, when you were depressed, when you were taking drugs, when you were, you know, hating people and doing just, just rebelling against anything that was godly or good, Jesus loved you at that moment. And he laid his life down. What an amazing, gracious, merciful God. This is God. This is God in the flesh. Emmanuel, that's what it means. Emmanuel, that means God with us. The Word of God became flesh. What an amazing thing. So as we continue reading, And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, we will (laughs) say... He will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of His Son, while we were still His enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of His Son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ made us friends of God. So the thing is, you know, we thought that God was against us. We thought that God was our enemy because of the bad things we had done. And we were afraid of God. We thought God was going to judge us and condemn us. But Jesus has saved us. Jesus has taken on the punishment that we thought we deserved. You know, Jesus went to the cross. He was beaten. He was whipped. A crown of thorns was put on his head. You know, and so the truth is at the cross... God the Father was in Christ, reconciling you to Himself, not counting your sins against you. This is the ministry of reconciliation. This is the ministry of righteousness which declares that you are accepted freely. That's the gospel. That is the good news. I'm just going to change the scripture. And it reads in 1 John 4, chapter 7 and onwards, Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much He loved us by sending His one and only Son into the world so that we might have eternal life through Him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. These scriptures right here are amazing. So good. I encourage you to read the book of 1 John. Read everything John has to write. Read 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. And uh, read his gospel that he wrote as well. He is the disciple in whom Jesus loved. He was conscious of God's love towards him. You know, so many of us uh, are so aware of how much we love God. But that love fluctuates because, you know, we go through different trials and things on earth and we get unhappy and we get emotional and whatever. And, 
but God's love for us is consistent all the way through. No matter what we do, no matter if we go through you know, highs and lows in life, God's love is unconditional, eternal, agape love, which is the God kind of love. Praise God. So just begin to be more aware of how much God loves you. You know, don't focus so much on how you how much you love God. Let God love you and you'll effortlessly fall in love with Him because His love is greater than all. And so, yeah, this is my one of my favorite scriptures. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us. He loved us first and sent His Son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. So if God has taken away our sins, why do we still feel condemned? Why do we still feel guilty? Why do we still feel ashamed and condemned of our sins that we've done in the past when they've been washed away and God can't even remember them? So think about that. We should have no more consciousness of the guilt and the shame and, you know, the negativity that comes with doing sins, you know, doing the wrong thing or thinking that we've disobeyed God. But the thing is, (laughs) it's Jesus' obedience that has made us righteous because we can't be righteous on our own. We're we're unrighteous. You know, and anyone thinks that they're if they think that they're righteous based on what they do, they've been deceived because that's self-righteousness and that's hypocrisy. Because no one is perfect except Jesus. He's the only one that was without sin and perfect. That's why he's the only one that could take away the sins of the world. And when he died, he rose on the third day because the Father raised him up. Because we were justified now. We were saved. We were redeemed because Jesus said it is finished. And he did the work for us. That's why righteousness is a gift. That's why Jesus took away our unrighteousness and washed our sins away in his blood. Because he loved us and wanted to spend eternity with us in heaven. The Bible says that for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Jesus was willing to endure the cross so that he could have so much fun and joy and bliss and happiness with his friends, with his family in heaven forever. And you get a glorified body. What an amazing thing is that. This this body that's decaying and growing old and it's going to die, God's going to give us a new body that lasts forever, that doesn't have any pain, that doesn't even get tired. It doesn't need to sleep. Think about that. So as we continue on, it says, Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us. And His love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us His Spirit as proof that we live in Him and He in us. Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. All who declare that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. Think about that. This simplicity of having Jesus in you and being saved is saying, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is Lord. When you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved forever. That's irreversible. You are a child of God. You don't have to do a million prayers and good works and good things and try and maintain your salvation by going to church every Sunday and giving money away and doing this and that. That's all dependent on you. And that's not the gospel. And that's not God's plan. God's plan is that you come to Jesus and find rest for your soul. And you live in peace. And you experience God's love. And you have fellowship with God. A real relationship with God. That's what it's all about. It's not about dead religion. And that's what I want to emphasize. It's about God's agape, unconditional, eternal, everlasting love. It's very simple. So it says, We know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in His love. Don't put your trust in your love for God. Once again, it fluctuates. It's up and down. But God's love is continuous, everlasting, constant, perfect, and pure. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. In them, And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. See, God's love is already perfect. But as we grow in fellowship, as we grow in a relationship with God who is love, our love becomes more perfect. 
because it's his love. He's pouring out love into our hearts as we get to know him more. That's why you need a relationship, a real daily relationship with Jesus Christ. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here on this world. How do we live? We live in love. We love one another. That's how the world will know that we are his disciples, not because we preach to them and say, repent, repent. You're going to go to hell if you don't turn to Jesus. You know, <laughs> we just love people and they see the light of God in us and they're like, I want that. That's attractive. That's real. That's genuine. This isn't no business set up church, man-made traditions and rules and rituals and all that nonsense. It's real life, genuine Jesus in us as we walk in him and as we just love. <clears throat> Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced His perfect love. We love each other because He first loved us. Think about that. We think that we just, oh, we love people. I love people so much. But why? Why do you love people? Because you are made in the image and likeness of God. And God is in you. And His love is manifesting and you are loving other people because you are just receiving so much love from God and it's real it's genuine and people can see it it's not fake Jesus love is not fake <laughs> he proved that by going to the cross for you he demonstrated his perfect love for the whole world so if someone says I love God but hates his fellow believer that person is a liar well if we don't love people we can see how can we love God whom we cannot see? And he has given us this command. Those who love God must also love their fellow believers. So there you go. Continue to walk in love and get to know Jesus. Come to his feet. Let Jesus minister to you, which just means just talk to God, basically. <laughs> it's the ministry of reconciliation because you have been reconciled to God. You have been accepted by God. I'm just here to let you know that truth. That's the good news. God already loves you. God already has reconciled you, forgiven you, and he loves you right now. All I'm saying is, why don't you get to know him? Why don't you talk to him? Because he's been with you all this time, and he's been protecting you, and he's been making sure that your life stays on track. <laughs> 